Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new MSI Pro DP400 AI. They're calling this a business and productivity PC, but basically we've got a really powerful workstation here. Video editing, photo editing, CAD, you want to build AI applications on this thing. I mean, you've got more than enough power with the specs that they packed into this thing. And when it's time to have a little fun, this will run any AAA game at 4K. Now taking a look at the internals here, it's all air-cooled. They didn't add a liquid cooler here, which is something I like to see in these. I mean, you definitely need a reliable system in this way. We don't have to worry about any kind of leaks or that pump failing. They've also packed 128 gigabytes of RAM, a 1300 watt power supply, and an RTX 5090. Of course, they do offer some lower end variants here, but uh, what we've got here is kind of their flagship when it comes to the new DP400 AI. And as for the overall specs here, like I mentioned, they are offering a couple different variants, but this one's powered by the Intel Core Ultra 285. So with this, we get 24 cores, 24 threads with 36 megabytes of cache. And this is configured with eight performance cores. Those will clock up to 5.6 gigahertz and 16 efficiency cores, which clock up to 4.6. We also have that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 with 32 gigs of GDDR6 RAM. They also offer the DP400 with the Intel Core Ultra 265 and an RTX 5070 or an RTX 5080. We also have 128 gigabytes of system RAM and in this machine it's running at 4400 megatransfers per second. It also has Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, a 1300 watt 80 plus gold power supply. You can add three M.2 SSDs to this thing four SATA 6 gig connectors, and enough room for a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive, and a 3.5 inch hard drive internally. It's running Windows 11 Pro out of the box, and uh, I definitely want to jump in here and show you how this thing performs. Jumping right in here, wanted to give you a look at a few things before we get into testing, but as you can see, we've got that Intel Core Ultra 9 285, 128 gigabytes of system memory at 4,400 megatransfers per second. Remember, it's a quad channel setup here. Uh, we've got our MPU, if you wanted to use it, the Intel AI Boost MPU. We've also got the Intel integrated graphics. But instead of using any of that for gaming and AI and even other workloads, we're going to be using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090. 31.5 gigabytes of GDDR6. This thing is quick. I mean, it's definitely a workhorse. A couple things that I've been messing around with are image and video generation. You could use Comfy UI if you want to. You could go with whatever you're used to or whatever you want to get into. And just to make it easy, I've got a Muse here. And originally AMD partnered with this company to bring a nice little AI suite over to AMD. But it also works really well with NVIDIA. So we've got image generation, but I wanted to go with some video generation. We're just going to do one video, quality, and we'll just do a cute kitten. And we're going to take the video length from two seconds up to six. We'll generate video. It's going to load and optimize the pipeline. Once that's finished, it needs to create those images. And we're doing up to 96 steps with all the images. Then it basically stitches them together. It's not perfect. It's not like the new WAN 2.1 or 2.2, which with the right setup does look absolutely amazing, but this is just super easy to use. A couple of clicks of a button, you can generate some images and you can set up a longer one through the expert mode. But right here, got a little kitten and yeah, it's moving around a little bit. Six seconds, let's do one more. That was, uh, it took 26.6 seconds to create this. Not horrible at all. Let's go one more time here. And you can see, GPU doing all the work over here. There we go. Yeah, image generation, video generation, just something quick to kind of show off here. Again, with a setup like this, I mean, comfy UI running on it is going to work amazingly. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was LM Studio, and I've already downloaded a couple models, but we're going to be using the Gemma 3 27 billion parameter model, and this is pretty quick. It's also really accurate. We'll load it into memory, give it a second for this to finish up, and then we can go ahead and ask it a question, but this is super quick, and it's going to be running all on that RTX 5090. We can swap this over to the CPU if you wanted to, but you're going to get the most performance out of this 5090 for sure, and it is really quick. By the end, 
it'll give us, you know, how many tokens it used and how fast it really was. And it really is flying. So uh, 65.06 tokens a second, and it did 1,574 tokens. So yeah, I mean, we knew that that 5090 was going to handle this just fine. We could go with a larger model if we wanted to. With that, uh, we didn't peg out our 32 gigs of memory here. I've got a couple others up here, but I wanted to go with that 27 billion. It's the one I've been messing around with recently, and I'm really digging Gemma locally. And this is all local AI running on this machine. Next thing I did here was run a few benchmarks, and we've got Geekbench 6 coming in with a solid single core of 3,104. Multi is also looking really great here with a 19,373 but I have seen this chip hit around 2100 and I'm pretty sure with some tweaking, we could definitely do it here, even just with the air cooler that's on here because temps have been really good with this system. Next one I ran was Cinebench R24 and for our single core score, we're up to 135, beating out that Apple M1 Max by quite a bit here and the M1 Ultra, obviously. And over on the multi side of things, we've got 24 cores, 24 threads, we're up to 2,175, also beating everything else on the list here. Jumping over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, we've got Steel Nomad. Total score here, 13,988, and our FPS was 139.89. Phenomenal, and I knew it would be. We've got an RTX 5090 here. And finally, 3D Mark Time Spy with a total score of 35,701. This thing is really putting down some amazing performance when it comes to the GPU. So now, let's get into some real-world gaming. Cyberpunk 2077 4K Ultra with no DLSS. I wanted to see how the system handled it at that native 4K. And just to show you here, from our video, we're right there at 4K. It says custom now, but I'll go to Ultra. We'll totally disable any scaling. So we're going to turn that completely off. We're now at Ultra with no scaling, and I'm not using any kind of ray tracing right now. We're going to test that next. But I was really impressed by this. By the end of the run here with no DLSS, I had an average of 93 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 at a 4K resolution. Looks absolutely amazing like this, and it is super smooth. But when it comes to this game, I mean, we can take it up even more to ray tracing overdrive. And with this, even with a powerful system like this, we do need a little bit of help. I enabled DLSS 4 multi-frame gen set to X4, ray tracing overdrive at 4K. And yeah, the multi-frame gen is really what's doing the trick here. We're seeing averages over 220 FPS with ray tracing overdrive enabled in Cyberpunk 2077. I also wanted to test out Spider-Man 2, and with this, I did have to enable some DLSS at 4K very high. With DLSS completely off, I was seeing averages of around 58, which was pretty odd. I figured we'd be able to run this with no scaling at all, but when it comes down to it, I just think it's game optimizations, and this one's been on the market for a while, but a lot of people have still been running into issues with it. And finally, Borderlands 4 at 4K, very high, DLSS set to quality. There's one more graphic setting that we can go up, and it really does kind of put a hurting, even on the RTX 5090 with no frame gen. And we're seeing averages in the high 80s with it. With frame gen enabled, you're going to get a lot more out of it, but in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU and GPU temps, and all of my testing was done with the side panel on the unit. When it comes to CPU temps, remember we've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 250A, average 1440p gaming, around 66 degrees Celsius, and the maximum I recorded while running benchmarks was 83. So that air cooler they're using here does work out pretty well. And as for GPU temps with that RTX 5090, Average 1440p gaming up to around 74 degrees Celsius, and the max recorded was 79. CPU, GPU, good to go here. It's got triple fans up front with this unit, and there's actually a lot of airflow through this system. I mean, given that we've got the grates on the front here, it's not a totally closed off setup. Overall, I do think that this would make a solid workstation. We've got those three M.2 slots, plus we can add a 3.5 inch drive and a 2.5 inch drive, so we can throw a ton of storage in this. Up to this RTX 5090, which is overkill for a lot of people out there, but when it comes to like AI, especially building AI applications, this could really help out in the long run. 
That's going to wrap it up for this look at the MSI DP400 AI. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to their official website. And if you've got any questions or want to see anything else running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.